Now I intentionally left the flare gun enabled and this is, I think you just click it, you click it and you fire off a flare and then it automatically reloads, does it not? Yeah, it automatically reloads. I think you have three or maybe four flare. I could have swore you could have seen, I think at the 190 you could actually see the reloads. But yeah, pretty, pretty neat. Uh, not much practical use unless you're doing multiplayer and you're just doing like comms out uh, type things where you just want to give a signal to another player to either take off or to land or whatever, you know, you could use that, but yeah, it's just neat to see in either case for our purposes here. So let's see, uh, navigation. We're out here just holding over, or, yeah, over a Napa at this point. Am I not over a Napa at this point? Where is the airfield? Oh yeah, right behind me. I just overflew it. So, let's go ahead and go start going out to Krimsk. Now, this indicator, okay, we just had like a little magnetic, uh, little magnetic uh, indicator. Do I have any, do I have like a little compass anywhere, or is this it? I think this might be it. I don't see another, like, backup magnetic compass. So, what we get here is just a course that we're flying. Like, right now, if I level out, you can see that we're flying about, oh, 165 one, on the course. Now, I can also... I can also just rotate the entire thing around and use it as sort of a course setter. So, if I wanted to fly, you know, from here, it's going to be about zero. Uh, we'll just say about maybe about zero seven five as a course to a Napa. It was zero nine zero from the airfield. So yeah, from here it'll be probably a little bit closer to zero six zero. So in this case, I just need to turn until my little indicator lines up, or if I just wanted to use it as a, like say for example, I were looking at a map. And let me bring up a map real quick and this is kind of the way that I would do it if I were using it in conjunction with a map I would just have it as straight up or straight ahead is due north let me bring up a map real quick and I'll show you exactly what I mean okay so I had this map right here and I, for some reason the auto maps that loaded just were a little bit weird I think it's because I'm so far to the west on the map that it just didn't give me any good maps but it kind of went to the uh, Crimean Pen Peninsula area instead of the area that I'm at right now. But, you know, say that I know that I'm down here, kind of to the bottom left of the map, which I pretty much am. Okay, I've got due north on the map, then I can correlate that directly. So I know that I'm heading, actually, uh, directly away from Krimsk at this point. So if I wanted to turn back to Krimsk, I would know that, okay, in this case, I need to fly about 060 from the bottom left to the top right. So then I would just bank left or bank right until I'm at about 060 and conversely if I wanted to use it as a course setter then I could just set the course to 060 and same thing I just fly it around until my little aircraft indicator lines up with 060 and I know that I'm flying directly at the intended uh, well the intended destination so that's how that would work so a couple of different ways that you could use this and I'll just use it in the course setter uh, function since I'm not using a map right now. I don't really need one because I know exactly where <laughs> Krimsk is and I can just do this visually. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll go ahead and fly out to Krimsk and I will come back. I'll continue reading through the manual just looking for anything that I wanted to correct from last time and uh, see where we go from there. I'll be right back. Okay, so coming back up, I just uh, really just kind of overflew a Napa and turned to the I guess planned course of roughly 090-091. So you can see that yeah, my aircraft is lined up correctly with that course. And even if I you know turn my course setter around, you can still see the direction that I'm going. But um, you can see that the aircraft is kind of deviating back to the left, so I just need to bank to the right to correct it. Now, okay, this is interesting because I'm going to have to, for this to kind of settle down, I'm going to have to level out. So once I level out, it kind of continues to sort of uh, recalibrate itself and get back onto the course so okay let me just kind of leave it level right here and it's kind of settling back down on the course so I guess there is a little bit of a a trick to this you just have to just kind of give it time to catch up if you do change courses now I can look out there in the distance and I think I can probably see Krimsk out there uh, yeah right right there that's the airfield so it's just off to the right and boy this is this is twitchy isn't it as far as uh, uh, correcting for bank which I mean that's uh, that's about what you would expect uh, 
imagine trying to calibrate a magnetic instrument in this big behemoth made of metal and even best case you know your your bank angle the amount of G you're going to put on this thing it's a mechanical device so you would have to just kind of give it time to calibrate give it time to kind of get itself squared back away before really trusting it so boy that's it's a little bit twitchier than I was expecting to be honest uh, knowing that okay it's going to be a little bit twitchy but yeah twitchier than I expected okay I'll continue on and I will be back I'm still keeping an eye out for the uh, drop tank fuel to cut off so yeah I'll, I'll be right back Okay, so we just got a message saying that we're approaching Krimsk. I was down here in the manual. I let myself drift off to the left a little bit, just kind of, <laughs> just as the engine torque kind of naturally pulls me off there. So there's Krimsk coming up right now. And let's see, we've got, I was looking at the electrical system. I know that I touched on it briefly in maybe the last video, a couple of videos back. I don't think I talked about how it works. It's obviously got a 24 volt generator. We're obviously got a generator it is in fact a 24 volt 2000 watt generator just run by the engine and a 7.5 amp hour battery and circuit breakers we looked at some of them just for operation of the systems that we have so we have the generator breaker right up here and that just puts the power coming off the generator just onto the main electrical bus and then from there the breakers just based on their function uh, provide power to a specific set of systems. So we have pedo heat, windshield, window heat, and heated gloves right here. We have exterior and interior lighting right here and right here. We have on the next page, yeah, we already looked at this one, MW50 starter, flares, uh, prop pitch, landing gear compass, Revy illumination right here. And then the bottom one, is that right? Yeah, V, okay, that was the bottom one, V100. So yeah, just for for example okay let me disable that one yeah you can see like for example yeah now the compass isn't working that apparently needs uh Good job. needs power okay so yeah here i am over krimsk so the yeah the navigation was kind of easy this time but i mean that's in a nutshell how you can navigate but yeah you can see that okay so what all did i shut off right there i shut off the mw50 system i shut off the starter ignition that's probably not a well, I guess, did that shut off the magnetos? Obviously it didn't because I'm still still running. Flares? So does that mean that I can't fire flares now? Well, apparently I can. Uh, prop pitch automation is off. Okay, landing gear, compass, revy illumination. You can see that shut off, so let me re-enable it. Okay, now I've got indications back up. So let's see. Okay, battery over here on this side. Got it. FUG-16, FUG-25 for the radio and the IFF, and then the tank fuel pumps. Okay, it's a simple, simple system, or simple systems. I wish we had, I wish we had a schematic. I'm sure I could find one if I found like a maintenance manual for the BF-109. Uh, it might be a little bit hard to find one specifically for the K-4, but I know I've seen maintenance manuals out there for this BF-109 aircraft in general. It'd be kind of neat to see the see the schematics and see exactly how all that stuff is tied together okay so continuing to hold here I still got the fuel coming from my, my drop tanks or drop tank so I'll continue kind of messing around in the manual and I'll be right back okay just continuing to hold here over Krimsk and fiddle around I was noticing that my airspeed indicator was just really really acting weird right now it's uh, it's basically down to zero which is telling me that I probably have some icing that I need to take care of on my, my pedo probe. So I'm going to turn the heating on and give that a few minutes. So I basically have the air data sensor out there just, you know, just uh, doing what an air data sensor does. It just based on the pressure coming into the probe, it is going to correlate that to a specific airspeed. Now, what I think happened is as I was up here kind of in the clouds, is that a little bit of ice might have build up out there so I've got the heater on I'm going to give it a few minutes and that should clear that out and start to give me accurate airspeed indications again 
and two is a bingo fuel. That's because I did not give two drop tanks for the extra fuel, and lest I, lest I crash the poor guy like I'm pretty sure I did last time, I'm going to have him uh, return to base. Let me exit out of that. Let me go wingman. Oh, uh, let's see. How do you do this? Navigation, RTB. RTB. That should... I think since I'm here over Krimsk, that should have to land at Krimsk. That's how I think that it works. Or, yeah, I, I could be wrong. <laughs> it might just... No, actually, I think it's waypoint uh, dependent. So, assuming that this was set up as a landing waypoint, that's where two would go to. And what it does, if it doesn't have anything set up as a landing waypoint, I honestly am not sure. Well, we'll find out, I guess change course to stay out of the cloud here and uh, I'll just continue to mess around up here and I'll be back once my airspeed indicator starts to uh, starts to work again or I run out of fuel in my tank whichever occurs first so be right back okay back with you a little bit later I've just been playing around with the chronometer or the the chronograph that we have here the clock it's I've, I've always just been fascinated with you know the timepieces especially mechanical ones like you would find in World War II aircraft and if they weren't so darn expensive I would have a collection of them but you can I mean they're really really well put together it's just kind of a lost art uh, there's mechanical timepieces nowadays but uh, what we have here is just a timepiece that we can use for among other things navigation now if I were really really on top of things when it came to planning this I would have also come up with, in addition to a heading, I would have come up with a distance from Anapa to Krimsk. And I could have used the stopwatch feature. If I just depress this little thing, you can see the the second hand start to come around. And I'm going to have a little 15 minute, uh, minute hand right here in the middle. So I could have, just based on the distance and the airspeed that I'm flying, been able to tell how long it will take to get here and then just based off the clock hit you know hit the start once I pass over the airfield and then as I come out come out here on my way then you know for example if I had been flying at 400 kilometers per hour and it's say 200 kilometers away then it would have taken me 30 minutes to get there that's just an, a for instance but that's that's how that works so I can just hit the stop button right there hit it again to reset and have the bezel that I can that I can swing around to wherever I want it and yeah gives you the current time you can I think you can well I thought you could pull this out in just the current time but I guess not but uh, yeah that's how that works and also I've been flying up around here at uh, you know a relatively high altitude and I've had the the oxygen system enabled kind of like I was trying last time and I think I have let me get myself kind of stabilized here so I don't Applying to or stall the aircraft as I, I'm down here. I think I was just not noticing that the gauge was working. I noted last time that I didn't think I was getting oxygen flow. But if I watch carefully, there it goes. It closes, now it opens. I don't think I was picking up on that. I was expecting a little bit more of a, a definitive black and white down there, but it's really, really subtle. Now it's black, closed, now it's open. So... I think, I think in fact it was working last time, I just didn't, I think when I saw the color change like that I thought it was just maybe like the shadow uh, effect that you get for different sun angles working on it, so I think it's working and I think it was working the last time that I tried it as well. So mystery, mystery solved on the oxygen regulator, I think that's, that's obviously working exactly as intended. I still have an unfrozen my pedo, so I've still got uh, an invalid airspeed indication right there. Still got fuel fuel flow from the tank. That seems abnormally high. I would have expected to run out of fuel from the drop tank a long, long time ago. But well, I'll I'll keep going. Still got uh, full fuel. So yeah, we'll see how this goes. I'll be right back. Okay, back with you several minutes later, and I had intended to hold off on the the weapon system until a later mission where we are specifically, well, you're supposed to in the campaign, then get into the weapon system, but 
Well, since I'm just kind of flying around here with an infinite amount of fuel, let me just start with the Rebby 16 gun sight. It's a reflex sight. It doesn't have like a... It's just a fixed sight, in other words, that is just sort of set to infinity. And we can... Uh, one of the neat little features here is we can... If I click on the right place... Yeah, I can stow the sight, click on it again to re-enable the sight. And one, of, one little thing, actually, I just kind of remember that it does this, is that... When you stow the sight, your center head position moves around, which I, I don't really like. I think you can disable that, but okay, stow it, your head position moves back to center, re-enable it, then your head position, just the default center position is right there lined up with the sight, which is kind of cool. I've been kind of instinctively going over there, or well, I thought myself just to look down the sight, but yeah, whatever. Uh, I'll recenter it right now. Okay, so I've got a brightness lever right here that I can use to increase or decrease the brightness of the reticle. And of course, the reticle itself can be enabled and disabled by the breaker that we already saw in action. I have a backup sighting system right here. If you look at the left side, I have, you know, in addition to the illuminated uh, uh, gun sight reticle, I have this, so I can kind of use this as a backup, and I, I'm not sure exactly if you're supposed to go... I would have thought that would have been perfect right there, but then again, that doesn't really... I would have thought that it would have lined up exactly with the side as well. Let me, let me try a little test fire real quick. Yeah, that's... that right there, that little sight picture that I have is definitely not what I'm looking for. Well, anyway, yeah, the, you have a backup sighting system right there. And, you know, just like with any, you know, sighting system or backup sighting system, you know, you just have to kind of get a feel for it on your own based on where, well, where you see the bullets going. And where your head position is as far as how you use it. Yeah, I think that's it right there. I think that was what I was missing. I think it's set up so that you don't necessarily get, like directly behind it well it's, it's set up strangely I'll, I'll scope a little bit more of that out once I start to actually shoot at targets on the ground I'll use that as a backup system and I also have a like a little a light filter that can cut down on glare like a little uh, a smoked glass type filter that can uh, can be enabled and disabled just by clicking at the appropriate point that's about as as complicated as it it gets. Other than that, you just uh, just go for your target and fire.